Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass is a collection of poems without a central narrative. Let's summarize these poems now. In Song of Myself, Whitman's speaker introduces himself as a poet and voice of the American people. He celebrates his poetic vision and catalogs the vast diversity of the American public. Readers, join in a poetic dialogue with him. In A Song for Occupations, the speaker praises the American people for having many occupations, which he lists and declares that all of them have equal value in his estimation. He wishes for each person to accept his or her worth and contribution to the whole. In To Think of Time, the speaker asks his reader if he thinks he is nothing, then declares all the ways in which the reader is not nothing. Despite cosmically short lifespans, humans are something because they're unique. The mark they make has an eternal quality. In The Sleepers, the speaker presents a vision of floating over the bodies of sleeping American people. He lists various types of sleepers, all equal in sleep. He is able to enter others' dreams, take on their identities, and understand them. In I Sing the Body Electric, the speaker describes various people in acts of love and friendship, describing anecdotes about the communion of bodies and his observations. All bodies are equally wonderful. In Faces, the speaker describes all the various types of faces he sees, both pleasant and hideous. And despite their differences, he sees them all and approves of them all. He can see beneath the surface to the core of human potential. In Song of the Answerer, a young man comes to visit the speaker, seeking answers and catalogs all the various people who accept him as he accepts them. He sees their inner beauty and this transforms them. In Europe, the 72nd and 73rd years of these states, Europe revolts against their royal rulers and Liberty comes to lend her support. The speaker will never give up his belief in Liberty. Tyrants will never control her. In a Boston ballad, the speaker attends a march to protest federal soldiers escorting a fugitive slave back to his master. Sarcastically, he says Congress should import King George's bones and bow down to them. In There Was a Child Went Forth, a child inspects the things he encounters in the world, and as he does, he becomes them. These objects are also now a part of the reader. In Who Learns My Lesson Complete, the speaker gives his audience a lesson, which is that one's first lesson is to learn how to learn lessons. He declares that everything is wonderful. Just try to find him something not wonderful. In Great Are the Myths, the speaker explains what he finds great. Myths, liberty, equality, democracy, and many other concepts and things. And there needs to be balance between good and evil and life and death. In I Hear America Singing, the speaker lists the diverse voices of an American public. Each person sings a song about his own experience, and each experience is unique and wonderful. In Starting from Palmanach, while at home, the speaker calls to all people in America to immerse themselves in his poetry and declares himself the poet of them all, no matter who they are. In I Saw in Louisiana a Live Oak Growing, the speaker sees a tree in Louisiana and takes a twig from at home. He often looks at the twig and thinks how he could never be as content as the tree hmm. to be alone. In Song of the Open Road, the speaker travels on the open road and catalogs the diversity of American people he meets there. And he invites his audience to come along with him, giving them his rules for the road. In Crossing Brooklyn Ferry, the speaker watches the Brooklyn Ferry as people head home from work in Manhattan, admiring the city and its inhabitants, the river, waves, and the sunset. Everyone is unified in their enjoyment of nature. In Pioneers, oh Pioneers, the speaker urges his audience, his fellow pioneers, a new generation, to seize a new world alongside him, trekking under a flag that unites them. In Out of the Cradle, Endlessly Rocking, the speaker discovers a nest of two birds. When the female bird goes missing, the male bird sings a sad song, which awakens the speaker's poetic spirit. He realizes that death is the word superior to all others. In As I Ebbed with the Ocean of Life, the speaker goes to the shore, troubled, likening himself to useless driftwood. He begs his mother, the ocean, to let the flow within him continue so he can write better poetry. We are all just driftwood in the ocean of life. In Beat, Beat Drums, the speaker commands the drums and bugles of war to beat and blow loudly. The public needs to be called to war. This is their purpose. In When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloomed, the speaker laments the loss of his president, Abraham Lincoln. 
He takes a sprig from a lilac bush and places the sprig on a coffin. He hears a bird sing a sad song. At first, the speaker does not join in, but when he does, he finally accepts death and keeps his memory of his loved ones. In O oh, Captain, My Captain, the speaker praises his captain, Abraham Lincoln, on leading the ship safely to port. When he sees the fallen captain dead upon the deck, he is upset, so the speaker walks the deck instead. In By Blue Ontario's Shore, the speaker sits by the blue shore of Lake Ontario and is asked to write a poem of America. The speaker catalogs America's cities, natural wonders, and people, and declares he should be America's poet. And when the bards of old visit, he tells them to go away. And in A Noiseless Patient Spider, the speaker watches a spider build a web, ceaselessly working like the way his soul works to understand the eternal. <laughs>